hi everyone, welcome to Toop TV. And this week has been a really big week for us. It's not every day that you turn 25. And Toop and Toop on the 8th of May, which was Saturday, did exactly that. We were 25 and we celebrated with all the team and a great night it was. Now, there's been a lot of talk about online marketing. Well, the latest and the biggest thing to happen is Facebook and social networks. So we go to the absolute top of the tree with the experts in Australia and we have an interview with them later in the show. For those of you looking for property, we head to St Peter's for SA's Finest and uh, a real entertaining property that is, you'll love it. Now for those of you that have questions, remember we're live, we're interactive, so call us and uh, we'll answer those questions at the end of the show. Enjoy it. So we go to the Panda enclosure, enclosure later in the show and just have a look at that 25th birthday celebration. It was a pretty big night. Um, also the investor renter section, uh, is it better to rent furnished or unfurnished properties? We look at that and of course we're going to check out today uh, what's happening and what's happening with the rents and the increases in the inside story. So let's get right on with the show and uh, get out in those streets. You'd probably say rental prices are going up because it's getting more expensive to buy a home, so a lot less people are able to buy and a lot more people are looking to rent, so it's just a supply versus demand. Yeah, I guess houses are going up in price and interest rates and stuff are going up in price, so um, people are asking more for rent, so they're almost covering their mortgages. There's just probably a bit more demand for rental properties at the moment because there's less people that are able to buy properties. Property seems to always be in the news. If it's not rents, it's uh, buying and selling, there's a lot happening, but a great space, it's good fun. Now, speaking of um, people in the property business who've been in it for a long time, as long as me, Matthew Cooper, Director of Matthew Cooper Property Group, joins us. Hello, Matthew. Hello, Anthony, how are you? Great, I've been very keen to get you on Toop TV for some time, Matthew. You're um, one of the great success stories, and we go back to when I first started um, and you appeared on the scene. Tell me about Matthew Cooper and let everyone know uh, what's your history and where you come from. Well, Anthony, my father's a retired builder, so I was always around building sites and I was always taught that if you wanted to do well in life, you had to own property. And the second rule was you had to borrow from the banks because it was a certainty that they were always going to have more money than you were ever going to have. So that's how I started off. I started off buying a house on a two street frontage, fixed the house up myself, the normal things you do when you've got a little bit of skill but not enough to be a, a builder. You give it a paint job, you give it some carpets, you, you tile this and you, you clean up the garden, sell them off, get a house built on the one behind and you go again. And as you know, I bought my second property I ever bought was I think one of the first ones you ever auctioned at 16 Janet Street, Evendale. I it still was, remember it. It was the first one. Absolutely. A nervous auction for you and nervous bidding for me. We were both a lot younger back then and that wound up being one of the most successful properties I've ever bought actually. And what that was 1986? It was November 1987, I can still remember it because it was a few weeks after the stock market crash and I was very nervous and didn't know what to do and what I've always found is that if you, if you buy when everybody wants to sell and sell when everybody wants to buy, not be scared to take a risk and the great thing i found about property is that it's always going to be there and it, it, it's always safe and steady and so you can afford to take a risk and from my point of view if it all went pear shaped I could always move into it or rent it out and it wasn't going to collapse in value. I mean, you, you see the stock market can collapse 50% in three months. I've never seen housing do that. It might be a bit slower to go up in a meteoric rise, but it, it, it's always that, that, that safety net that you've got. Now, Matthew, how many years have you been in um, developing yourself? Well, I bought my first house in Cumberland Park in 1986, the second one from you in 1987. So we're, we're talking about 25 years or so. Right, and you were how old? So. I would have been 18, 18 and a half, 19 when I bought my first property. And as I said, it was always drummed into me, just take a risk and have a go. And you've got to be a conservative risk taker. And I just jumped in and I probably had no idea what I was doing and I was lucky to survive the first couple, but it's very lucky it all came out and came out well and one led to another one, then another one, and it all got a lot bigger over a few years. Matthew, so you're, you're 18 to 19. You started your first investment when everyone else was going broke. Yep. You've survived, I know you've survived um, so many people who've done exactly what you've done and gone broke, they're out of the market. What's the secret? What's the, what's the gem? What's the, what the, advice is there? The secret is to be a conservative risk taker and it's, it, it, it's hard to describe because there's, there's times when you know you, you, you don't want to bite off more than you can chew 
but you can never just sit down and do nothing. You've always got to take a slight risk and whether you buy one rental property and hope the tenants don't trash it and that's the risk you take or you borrow a little bit of money and, and buy some shares and hope they don't collapse, it's, it's, it's taking some risks, not biting off more than you can chew and not being scared to borrow from the banks because you, you, if you save up enough money to buy your second house, it'll be 20 years and the thing's doubled in price. So you, you have to borrow, you can't be scared about borrowing and you just have to take a little bit of a plunge, but without, don't buy 10 at once, buy one, and then get that going and then buy the other one if you can. So what's the maximum number of developments that you've had on the go and perhaps a dollar value of those? Oh look, I've had 15 to 20 sites on the go at any one time. And sometimes there can be two on each site, sometimes there can be five. The money changes over time because the first house I bought cost $65,500. All right. The one I bought from you was $100,000. Yeah. And I got a house out of that and two blocks of land, which sounds ridiculous, but that was, I mean, everyone else was valuing it at the same time. Now stuff I buy can be a $10 million block of land and that, that rolls off the tongue very easily, but there's a huge debt to the bank and sometimes you syndicate that with some partners to help ease the burden. So, I mean, I might have at the moment 30 or $40 million of real estate being built and developed. Unreal. But it, it sounds a lot better than it is, because if you go and build two duplexes at Parkside, they're both going to sell for 850000 Building two duplexes at Parkside each year doesn't make a huge developer. There's $1.7 million just in that. So if I was doing five duplexes at Parkside at once, I'd have $10 million on the, on the radar. If you go yeah. on. So, so in this process, did you have a mentor or did you just learn it yourself? I didn't really have a mentor at all. I mean, as I said, my father was a retired builder, so I learned a little bit about, about building. Um, I accidentally fell into it. I played tennis with a guy that was a commercial property developer. I worked for him for a couple of years and that gave me a wage, so a bit of cash flow to help buy the things. And then I left there and started on my own uh, doing the residential uh, development. And as I said, the first one worked, the second one worked really well. If they hadn't worked, I probably would have gone, that wasn't too good and gone and been a lawyer or something like that. Because you're a qualified lawyer? That's right, yeah, I put myself through law school while I was doing the, um, the subdivisions and things like that. Fantastic. We'll come back for more in a minute, Matthew, because um, it's a fascinating story. But in the meantime, there's a, a big trend emerging and the, the space that everyone is keeping an eye on is this uh, social networking. And we've got this special interview uh, with the CEO of Deloitte Digital, Peter Williams. And let's go and have a look at what Peter's got to say about social networks. This is fascinating stuff.